So we talked about CNN and Harris on CNN, and I wanted to start with kind of remember that CNN panel, if she had done well, would have been jumping up and down, praising the performance, saying this was what we needed from Harris. She's finally sealing the deal, telling about the issues. She's talking about what she would do differently. You know, she's not afraid to say, yeah, well, you need some border wall. I've I've figured that out over the last three and a half years that it's not going to be able to do it all without putting some more uh, barriers in place. But instead, she won't even say that directly. She'll imply it. To fix the problem, you're, you're doing this compromise bill. It does call for $650 million that was earmarked under Trump to actually still go to build the wall. I am not afraid of good ideas where they occur. You know, so you don't think it's stupid anymore? I think what he did and how he did it did, was did not make much sense because he actually didn't do much of anything. I just talk, talked about that wall, right? We just talked about it. He didn't actually do much of anything. But you do want to build some wall. I want to strengthen our border. You can't just say over and over again that you're not going to change any positions. You can't always hold your ground. You've got to kind of concede something that you've learned as vice president that may have, again, if you're going to come out with a policy difference and run ads about showing all these border walls, that you got to come out and say, yeah, I do support building more of the border walls. And here's how it's different that I'd like to do it different than President Trump. You could say that or the areas I'd like to focus on or where I think it needs to be versus uh, maybe not as much, but you you can't just say whatever it takes. I support to you know to secure the border because that's not an actual policy position. That's just words. Let's play bite seventeen for folks, and this is where Anderson Cooper was kind of drilling down even further, saying why haven't you accomplished the things that you say you want to do? And she gives kind of a very uh, Kamala Harris answer. Let's go ahead and play bite seventeen. Some voters, though, might ask, you've been in the White House for, for four years, you were vice president, not the president, but why wasn't any of that done over the last four years? Well, there was a lot that was done, but there's more to do, Anderson. And, and I'm pointing out things that need to be done, that haven't been done, but need to be done. And I'm not going to shy away from saying, hey, these are still problems that we need to fix. You know, I mean, need to be done, that haven't been done. I mean, again, if you want to start there, you could start there, but then you should be able to go in and say, but let's not forget. And I'm not saying that you can't find that somewhere on our campaign website. But voters, they're not going to your campaign website if you're not even giving them enough reason when you're talking to them directly. I want to go to Dana Bash first because Dana, again, is a reporter. At the end of the day, her credibility lies on how she analyzes interviews that she does and these town halls that she analyzes while and watches. And when you get 12 days out, and they were 13 days out yesterday, but, you know, within two weeks of the election, it doesn't really matter where their politics fall because their careers are also judged by, are they just being honest brokers about what they just watched? Or are they going to try and tell you that uh, you didn't actually see what they saw? And it's somehow, um, however you saw it, was incorrect. They're not doing that anymore. So I think the gloves are off when it comes to at least – Places like CNN, MSNBC has sold out so far to the left. I think they would just, they, they wish Kamala Harris was even more liberal. So I'm not sure that, uh, again, they're going to get a lot of criticism there, except criticism from the left coming a different way. But take a listen to Dana Bash, because again, they are looking at their own careers. 12, you know, now we're 12 days out. And, and when someone's having to do a town hall like this, you either close the deal or you don't. Take a listen. I'll just tell you what I'm hearing from people who I have been talking to, uh, and that is that uh, if her goal was to close the deal, they're not sure she did that. And, you know, some people have asked, is she being held to a different standard? Maybe. But that's maybe the world that she's living in. And on the question of who she is, People are understanding that a little bit more. But what she will do, the question about her legislative priorities, name one, there, there wasn't one. Um, you know, some more of her personality and her sort of character uh, questions about your weaknesses or uh, what, what mistakes uh, did you make? Not necessarily the answers there. No legislative priorities. The one time she started off the question about a weakness, it was like, well, I like to really kick the can on issues. I like to really get in the weeds and get all the sides on issues and make sure that we're really well informed. But I actually see that as a strength. 
Well, that's not a weakness then. I mean, you're not answering the question. Um, you can come up with weaknesses, by the way, that and we were talking about this last night, that are still not like, uh, again, so bad. You know, your weakness can be that I'm so I'm so committed to these seasons. So, you know, sometimes I, I've got kind of, you know, 20, that my vision is locked in on the goal and I've got to make sure that I go to my team and we're not missing the small things, you know, trying to get to the bigger goals. Or, you know, I'm so focused on this issue right now that I always have to, you know, always have to remind myself as vice president that it's not just that issue. I'm not just a senator anymore worrying about a state and worrying about issues that come forward as legislation. No legislative priorities? I mean, like, what do you want to do? I, I for, for, First of all, in half the interviews, it, when it comes to abortion priorities, we'll talk about later, um, she knows that she wants to take away the conscious protections, so I guess she, she doesn't want to call that a legislative priority. I thought she wants to reinstate Roe as, as law. I thought that, I mean, you could say that's a legislative priority. I don't want to answer these questions for Democrats, but what I'm saying is you don't have to be that polished or great of a politician if you've made it that far up to answer questions from an audience. You know, that's not Anderson Cooper pushing. That's just audience questions, the basic questions that I think people used to get when you'd apply for a job. Now, I don't think they, I don't know if they ask you the weaknesses question anymore because these kids coming out of school today, probably, you know, you can't handle that question and you get HR coming after you. But the idea is that you can answer that question and a weakness isn't, doesn't always have to be such a bad thing. It could just be like, yeah, I can be obsessive over, you know, perfection and not, and then sometimes you miss the, the, the small things. So I've got to have a team around me that makes sure I don't miss the small things. Well, that doesn't sound so bad, does it? But it is a weakness. And that would be a weakness. Other people are all big picture, right? And I think that, you know, some people like uh, Trump, they like to be involved in every single thing. And that's difficult too, because if you're involved in every single thing, um, once you think that you've gotten that thing done, as president, like he said before, and you've you put out the order or you put out the sign the law, and you think it's actually getting done, and then you check a month later, and the bureaucracy is still dragging its feet, and you say, "What's going on here?" Because you're not used to that world of Washington, where just getting it legislatively done doesn't actually mean, and signing into law doesn't actually mean it actually starts going into effect if you don't push it. So again, I don't have a lot of again, I, and I don't think anybody does much grace period will for that because again if you write, get to this level those kind of questions shouldn't be difficult legislative priority you're running for president of the united states and you don't have an idea of what you want to put forward in your first 100 days that's right and that's why it's kind of bizarre that she won't answer some of these questions even it, like the legislative priorities it wasn't that she said well i have three I i'm sorry you asked for one i'll give you three right. no she just said i have a lot of priorities the vagueness, for some reason, they think attack Trump because she called him a fascist last night. Yeah, okay. So attack Trump and be vague is a winning combination. They are one step away from calling him Hitler. And they're already pushing out articles by other people who are calling him Hitler. Let's actually play the David Axelrod bite because I think it's important for audience to hear from David Axelrod, the man behind President Obama's victory in 2008 and in 2012 as well. He kind of gave birth to the new Democrat Party in some ways and as a genius political strategist. But what he's laying out here should be concerning for the campaign. But also, once again, you talk about this. She is so set in her ways saying, no, you can't even object. You can't use your First Amendment right <laughs> to object because of the right to abortion that they claim exists. Yeah. So I, I think it's important to hear about David Axelrod and her take on not conceding anything by 14. The things that would concern me is when she doesn't want to answer a question, her habit is to kind of go to world word salad city. And she did that on a couple of answers. One was on Israel. Anderson asked a direct question. Would you be stronger on Israel than Trump? And uh, there was a seven minute answer, but not, none of it related to the question he was asking. And so, you know, on s certain questions like that, on immigration, uh, I thought she missed an opportunity because she would acknowledge no concerns about any of the administration's policies. Uh, and that's a mistake. Sometimes you have to concede things. Huh. Uh, and she didn't concede much. Because David Axelrod, he comes at it, you know, as a strategist. Basically, is this connecting right with voters? He's about winning and losing. So again, credibility-wise, he's not going to watch something like that this, this far, this close to the election day, knowing that people have already put in millions of votes on both sides, and say that, you know, it was just great. You know, you can do that six months ago. 
can do it nine months ago, a year ago. But you can't do it, you know, when you're less than two weeks out. And I think the criticism might get tougher on Harris if she continues to be able to uh, not articulate her views. And if you can't articulate your views, guess what happens by election day? Those voters don't show up and wait in line for three hours. So your hardcore anti-Trump support, you know, anti-Trump voters, they may have voted early. They may not care as much. But the people you got to convince still are the people that are going to go and show up early in the morning or after work or in the middle of the day while their kids are at school or on their lunch break on election day. And they're not going to go there to vote for you if you don't give them policy positions so they know what they th- at least think they are voting for that person to go in and fight for.